So I just want to start off this video by saying thank you. Last year's review on Odyssey Atsura has become one of the best performing videos on the channel and since then, it's honestly been a great time to be a fan. Not only have we been getting omnibuses of the manga released by Viz Media, we've gotten a reboot that's actually really solid thus far. And Discotech has not only released every movie on Blu-ray, but will start releasing the original show in volume starting this April. But if you're new to the channel or have no idea what an Odyssey Atsura is, you can either A, watch my video linked in the description, or B, listen to a very condensed oversimplification of the series that I will tell you right now. Odyssey Atsura is a funny little manga by the legendary Rumiko Takahashi about a guy who really sucks at life and accidentally pulls a bikini-wearing overly obsessive baddie from outer space. Everything else is a bunch of shenanigans involving some of the absolute worst people you'll ever meet. But it's okay, because it's funny. Anyway, with that in mind, while my video on Odyssey Atsura mainly covered the manga and anime in terms of its hilarity and thematic elements, I never quite talked about the movies, as I felt they deserved a video on their own. I mean, after all, there are six of them, released between 1983 and 1991, during and after the anime had aired. Some have ties to the manga and show, others are more like one-offs. And now, I will take this time to rank all six Urusei Atsura movies, plus a bonus one at the end. So let's get started with... Nineteen-eighty-three's Urusei Atsura Movie 1, Only You, directed by the legendary Mamoru Oshii, making this his first debut as a director for a feature film. When Atsuru was a little kid, he actually had an encounter with an alien girl named L, long before Lum. At this time, they made a promise that they'll get married when she returns to Earth, all after a game of Shadow Tag. Eleven years go by, and as one could imagine with Aturu already being with Lum, and is also a big dimwit, it becomes this big game of tug-of-war with Lum and L trying to win back Aturu. A lot of people say that Mamoru Oshii was the heart and soul of Urusei Atsura's anime adaptation, and honestly, I agree. His way of handling the source material is done beautifully with this one, basically taking Takahashi's comedic work and adding emotional layers of humanity to it using it as a way to explore human connection, a common theme in many of his works. And while there would be a few frustrations between Oshii and Takahashi in regards to adapting Odyssey Atsura, they had a good relationship, all things considered. Although this is not to say Only You is the best representation of Oshii's work on the series, as it was a victim to a case of studio interference, as they wanted it to be much more in line with Takahashi's work, and that he originally wasn't going to direct it. But it's a fine one, as the tone fits very well with the earlier parts of Urusei Atsura's story, and really plays with the comedy. And it's because of this that Only You happens to be Rumiko Takahashi's favorite in the bunch. And I will say, the ending had me cracking up. Because no matter what happens, Aturu will always be the same. Overall, with the fact that it makes good use of fun characters and an interesting premise that has plenty of room for opportunities regarding drama, comedy, tension, wonder, and spectacle, I'm putting only you in A tier. Too easy. No sweat. Movie 2, Beautiful Dreamer, released in 1984, also directed by Oshi. After a failed attempt at preparing for a campus festival, the students of Tomobiki High find themselves trapped in a never-ending loop where not only the same day repeats itself a la Groundhog Day before Groundhog Day existed, but can never escape their hometown. And no matter what, all their efforts are futile, as it turns out the entire town is drifting through space on the back of a sea turtle, and as the story progresses, the students and anyone associated with them disappear one by one as the town becomes more overrun and post-apocalyptic. You know what? I'll say it. This is the best one. For me, at least. A lot of people regard this as one of Mamoru Oshii's finest works, and all for good reason. Even though it's considered a major departure from the source material, his strengths are very much present here, as Oshii uses a philosophical story to dive into themes relating to dreams, inherent desires, and our acceptance of the reality that surrounds us. 
Yeah, Oshi was on about this stuff long before Ghost in the Shell, The Matrix, and Inception. And like Only You, Beautiful Dreamer contains influence from Urashima Taro, a Japanese fairy tale that's ultimately about what we desire as humans and how we perceive the passage of time. Also, Kaiju and Tokusatsu fans will have a blast with this one, with people dressed as Ultraman monsters, a newspaper that predicted the 90s Gamera trilogy over a decade prior, and a scene where the characters watch the original Godzilla, and because no home video releases of the film existed at the time, it was drawn from memory. In short, Beautiful Dreamer is beautiful. Easily one of the best animated features I've ever seen. And is definitely worthy of S tier. That was incredible! Now we start to get a little divisive. 1985 saw the release of Movie 3, Remember My Love, directed by Kazuo Yamazaki. In this one, Ataru gets turned into a hippo during a magic show, and Lum has to find a way to turn him back. As the story progresses, Lum becomes trapped in subspace while things slowly revert back to normal without her presence. This one was pretty slow moving, and admittedly, it did lose me a couple times. It felt like the film wasn't entirely sure as to what it wanted to be. On one hand, it tries to tell a story about how fate brings people together, but it kinda meanders during its progression. Admittedly, I'm not too familiar with Kazuo Yamazaki's work, but I am aware that he was an animation director for a bunch of classic mecha, as well as Aim for the Ace, The Ultraman, and Beautiful Dreamer. Honestly, not a whole lot to say about this one, aside from the fact that there's a Hakaider cameo and the first ever animated appearance of Bulma from Dragon Ball. Not bad, but it's nowhere near the level of its predecessors. Overall, D tier. Man, today's not my day. Whoa! Oh boy, now we're really getting into it. This is Movie 4, Lum the Forever, from 1986, also directed by Kazuo Yamazaki. Basically, the students of Tomobiki High are making a student film, and after a centuries-old tree of the Mendo family is cut down, Lum falls ill and loses her powers, as her existence slowly drifts away from reality with people forgetting who she is, and the students try to get to the bottom of it. Depending on who you ask, Lum the Forever is either the best of the films, or the worst. For me, I'm somewhere in between. It tries to tackle some of the ideas that Beautiful Dreamer does, but they kind of feel a little muddled. This is likely because apparently the movie went through plenty of revisions that didn't quite fully capture what the screenwriter was going for. Who was the screenwriter, you may ask? Well, none other than Toshiki Inoue. Yeah, the writer behind not only some episodes of Urusei Atsura, but was the head writer of Death Note, whose work is also present in countless Toei Tokusatsu properties, notably Jetman, Mechanical Violator Hakaider, and Kamen Rider Kuga. It's a huge shame because Inoue is brilliant and is clearly capable of telling stories that easily resonate with viewers. There's a reason the Don Brothers was crazy good to this week meme has been spammed throughout its entire run. Allegedly, Rumiko Takahashi disliked this movie so much that she demanded the anime to end. The release dates for this movie and the final episode seem to align with that, but I couldn't find an exact source on this. Though considering how the manga's finale didn't get adapted till after the show ended, it's possible. Other factors may include the changes in studios, staff, and so forth, as well as ratings, so I can't really say for sure. There are also people who say that this movie is intentionally made to confuse the viewer, with scenes that seemingly lead to nowhere, but all have some sort of connection. Going off of Inoue's work on Don Brothers, that could very well be the case, considering the shenanigans of that show. But it is mighty ambitious to execute such a thing in a theatrical format. In turn, you could say that Lum the Forever challenges the viewer by asking it to make sense of the happenings within its plot. It's a story about life, and how we try to make sense of it through the things we love and our connections to one another. And with that, I do feel the emotional beats of the story. For being what one may think is a mess of a film, it's quite memorable. While I don't find myself revisiting this one a whole lot, there are definitely elements I appreciate from it. So for me, Lum the Forever is A tier. That was cool! 
If there's something I'm missing, prove me wrong in the comments. I mean, just ask my editor. I have a thing for being wrong. What? All right, we're in the home stretch now. Urusei Yatsura, the final chapter, 1988. This one would be directed by Satoshi Tezaki, older brother of Osamu Tezaki, known for his work on the 1980 adaptation of Astro Boy, as well as the Cobra OVAs and Shintet's Jin 28 Go. This film would adapt the manga's final storyline, where because of a really dumb deal made by Lum's grandfather, the grandson of a creepy old man would marry the next woman in his lineage, who happens to be Lum. This grandson is named Rupa, and he comes to Earth to take Lum for himself through very creepy and manipulative means. The whole ordeal causes outrage, especially between Lum and Ataru, and after a huge misunderstanding that occurs when Ataru tries to rescue her, the two split up. Now, if you've seen the show, you'd think, okay, obviously they're gonna forgive each other and get back together, that's just how things work. Well, here, it feels hopeless. You really get the impression that they're done, and honestly, it's frustrating. You want to see these two back together, and even after the whole situation is explained to them, they still feel the need to take these ridiculously petty pot shots at one another. Like, geez, can can y'all just stop? It's like you're actually watching a couple's relationship just crumble away in real time. Later on, giant mushrooms start growing all over the world, and only Rupa can stop it. And the only way he can is if Ataru beats Lum in a game of tag, just like the one they had at the very beginning of the series. But there's another condition. It's either that, or Ataru verbally expresses his love for Lum by saying, I love you. And Ataru, being the overly confident jackass he is, decides, I'm not gonna say it. If I beat her before, I can beat her again. The entire fate of the world is at stake and this man does not choose the easy way out. God, this motherfucker is hopeless. I won't spoil the rest as I'm sure y'all can figure it out, but honestly, I found the ending to be very heartwarming and comforting. The final chapter was all around a pretty good movie. It gets annoying, but there's a reason for that. Solid B tier, I'd say. That wasn't so hard. But we're not done yet. Next movie is Urusei Yatsura, Always My Darling, from 1991 directed by Katsuhisha Yamada of Mazinger Z and Gachaman. This one was made to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the anime, about an alien girl named Lupika who's in love with a tofu salesman. She hears about a love potion that can only be attained by the most lecherous man in the universe. I'm sure you know where this is going. So she bags Aturu and everyone tries to find him. And as Aturu and Lupika go to retrieve the love potion, it's very clear that they have their own ulterior motives for when they get it, so things do not go well to say the least. Not much to say, but it's a fun one nonetheless. Putting it in C tier. <laughs> No problem. And now for our bonus movie. I briefly talked about this in my Things You Probably Didn't Know About Urusei Yatsura video, but I think it's worthy of a mention. 2020's Beautiful Dreamer, directed by Katsuyuki Motohiro of Psychopaths and FLCL. Originally, I bought the Blu-ray of this movie in hopes to rip and fan sub it, but there was a problem. This Blu-ray has no Japanese subtitles to translate from, so unfortunately I'll have to leave the responsibility to someone else. But how's the movie? In short, it's about a group of film students who find a script of Urusei Yatsura Movie 2 Beautiful Dreamer and decide to adapt it for a project. There's some ups and downs like any production, especially on a student level, and honestly, it was a nice and wholesome time. Granted, I couldn't understand what was happening exactly, but having already seen Movie 2, I was able to get some of it. As someone who studied film in college and got a media degree, this film stuck with me. I found it to be pretty inspirational, as it kind of goes into the ins and outs of these types of zero-budget student projects that are all held together by love and passion. I mean, I would know. All in all, for fans of Urusei Yatsura and film students, I'd give it a watch. If you can, that is, since it doesn't seem to be streaming anywhere online. So with that said, A tier. That was fucking horrible! And that's that. Every Urusei Yatsura movie ranked. Do y'all agree? Do y'all disagree? 
Let me know in the comments, and I want to give a very special shout out to my channel members and my supporters on Patreon, so if you like what you see, then consider supporting the channel with the link in the description where at least for a single dollar, you can get access to my Discord server, and you can also unlock other perks like early access to videos and exclusive content. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and this is Titan Goji, signing off.